how much water is there, how do we know where it is, how it moves, how do we know how much we use. We don't know how much water we use, it's crazy. The types of questions we're talking about, they're big questions. We can find out how much water we use and answer these big questions. We can determine the water budget for a watershed. A water budget is a tool, like your family budget and your bank accounts. To get a bank account balance, you need to know what's already there. In a watershed, this means measuring soil moisture, the water stored in the soil, groundwater, and surface water. These are the stores in the watershed. To get a water budget, we also need to know what enters and leaves. In a watershed, rain and snow melt are inputs, like deposits, adding up. Stream flow, underground flows, evaporation and transpiration are outputs, like expenses and withdrawals, that draw down the balance in your accounts. Inputs and outputs are known as fluxes, or the rates of movement of water. Fluxes also occur between stores within a watershed, such as when groundwater discharges through a spring, and are measured as well. People can change inputs and outputs in watersheds. For example, by moving water from one basin to another, or accelerating fluxes by pumping groundwater for irrigation. A water budget measures the water cycle, the cycle that includes the fluxes of precipitation, stream flow, and groundwater, and the stores of soil water, groundwater, lakes, and reservoirs. Water budgets allow us to determine how much we are changing the water cycle. If we can find a sub-watershed that has, let's pick a topic, say, land use. If we find a sub-watershed that has 100% urban cover, but has the same geology, shape, size, aspect, and landform as another sub-watershed that is 100% forested, we can start to look at how urban land use impacts the hydrologic cycle. And all this can be accomplished with input-output budgets. Water also carries chemicals and sediments. By measuring their concentration, we can construct budgets for them as well. Determining the amount or mass of chemicals and sediments can help to determine how large the influence of our activities is relative to natural cycling of materials through a watershed. For example, many coastal waters are affected by excess nitrate that results in areas of low oxygen or hypoxia. Nutrient budgets, one kind of chemical budget, help us determine the relative importance of nitrogen sources, such as air pollution and chemical fertilizers, and how quickly our activities will change the hypoxia. Like using a budget to save for the down payment on a home, with a water budget, you can make better decisions on how to allocate the use of water in a watershed. We can know how much water we have and how much water we use. Everyone lives in a watershed. Learn more about where you live.